Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka Mono Bluetron, back again with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. Now today we're taking a break from the KC Cup to play some Paper Yu-Gi-Oh, and we've got a pretty good reason for doing so. I pressed my ear to the ground yesterday and heard vague whispers that a new hero had just been released, and lo and behold it was Extra Hero Wonder Diviner. Now thankfully it's hilariously straightforward link arrows facilitate a game plan that I am already intimately familiar with, Masked Hero Dark Law, so let's see if this is finally enough to make Hero playable again and rid me of my thousand-year curse. So, here's the list. <sighs> now, isn't that beautiful? You know, for once, I feel as if I don't actually have to apologize for how bad the deck looks in deck edit. As always, I'll give you a little bit of background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and as always, the card by card. So firstly, for those of you who don't know, Hero is an archetype as old as Dirt, or at least as old as GX. It's been through about 500 different iterations of a deck, and about 8 different generations of heroes, featuring the semi-playable Destiny heroes, the medium-playable Elemental heroes, the pretty-playable Mast heroes, and some, like, Neos heroes that, uh, we... we just don't talk about. The newest member of the lineage of heroism is Extra Heroes, which looks to be at least one extra deck hero designed to make use of Link Summoning. Now this man was made with one purpose in mind, as evidenced by his up and down Link arrows, to make Dark Law the most successful version of the deck in recent years. Now I think Konami expects us to be satisfied with doing something like, say, special summoning a Shadow Mist, normal summoning a Vion, sending and specialing a Malicious, making Diviner, then Mask changing into Dark Law on our opponent's draw step, keeping an Honesty Neos in hand to protect the Macro Daddy. But we are here to outsmart Konami. And one card that might as well represent Konami's ability to be consistently outsmarted by a player base full of 140 IQ Rick and Morty fans is Grinder Golem. Now by using Grinder Golem's now famous instant link for play, we're going to be able to do a little better than two monsters and a mask change. By using a bevy of draw spells to all but guarantee we have the Golem or one of our other enablers like Gofu in our opener, we can make a Skull Death, which I guarantee you will be the TCG localization, using repeated Golems. Then we can use his effect to special summon a Shadow Mist from hand, which we are all but guaranteed to have from the four draws, set it and mask change along with the best spells and traps from our deck, which once again we're guaranteed by putting stuff like extraneous maliciouses back at the bottom of our deck. Best case scenario, we end with a Dark Loss, Skull Death, Diviner, and then some combination of four or five hand traps and traps, and an Honesty Neos in our hand. Worst case scenario, we play as Konami intended, and truthfully, sometimes Dark Law is just enough to win the game on his own. So, with that, let's go to the build. First is our hero lineup. We have three copies of Shadow Mist, three copies of Vion, three copies of Malicious, and one Honesty as the Shadow Search target. I mean, woo. It feels great to only have to play the heroes that are good. The list is so tight there aren't loose copies of things like Goblinburg, Polymerization, or Neos Alias floating around. We've got Shadow Mist for the Dark Law, Vions for the Link play, and Maliciouses to do what they do best, plus us. Next are our Link Enablers. Three copies of Grinder Golem, and Jesus has this card broken. It gets us upwards of six tokens a turn, although it locks us out of our normal, even though Skull Death helps us around that. One Gofu for similar reasons, uh, usually we can make this work as well. Three copies of Ghost Ogre as the hand trap of choice, I just like destroying cards, and this card becomes a lot better when Dark Law's on the field, and then one Max C. For spells, we have one Rota for the Shadows or Vion, one Foolish for Maliciouses, three A Hero Lives to Special Shadow Mist, three copies of Mask Change for, uh, obvious reasons. One Raigeki, three Allure to find the Golems, two Desires to find the Golems, again, two Cosmic to be good and out things we can't otherwise beat, and finally three copies of Scapegoat to be Golems four, five, and six when we brick into just Dark Law. We'll round things out with two copies of Solemn Strike and a Solemn Warning. In the extra, we have one copy of Anarchy, two copies of Dark Law, and one Baguska, very, very light on non-Link monsters. Speaking of, we have one copy of Wonder Diviner, who gets back a fusion spell when a hero is special to his Link point, and specials a hero from hand if he dies. One copy of Borolode, one Skull Death, one Firewall, two Akashic, one Misses, one copy of Security Dragon, then two Link Spiders, and a Link Karibo. So with that, let's get into the games. Our first match is up against Cybers, and despite the fact that this deck hasn't really put up any results yet, it sure is interesting to see how many people are playing it on YGO Pro. A lot of people trying to enact Playmaker's Will. We've opened very well. We have a copy of A Hero Lives and a Grinder Golem, which is exactly what we want to see. We'll go ahead and fire off this A Hero Lives in order to get ourselves a copy of Shadow Mist and, of course, a mass change to our hand. Then we'll use Grinder Golem's effect to get two tokens to our side of the field. One will become a Link Karibo, and one will become a Link Spider. Both will then become an Akashic Magician, which will return the Grinder Golem, whose effect we will immediately use again, this time using the 
the two copies of the tokens to make a security dragon, bouncing the grinder golem for a second time, using its effect for a third time, going into a linkaribo from grave, and finally a skull deet. Now skull deet's effect is going to draw us four and shuffle three, allowing us to sculpt our hand. We're going to use alert to banish grinder golem, draw into a copy of rota, special summon this vion, use vion's effect to send a copy of malicious, banish the malicious for another one, link summon a wonder diviner, and then set a whole bunch of cards. In our opponent's draw step, we're going to flip up this copy of mass change to get a dark law and an honesty neos in hand, and of course because our opponent has a monster on their side of the board, this Link Slayer is kind of turned off for them. They're going to have to normal summon it. They will do that and then summon a couple of other Cybers monsters. Of course, once they go into Trigate Wizard, we'll just Solemn Strike. We did draw a lot of cards, so I don't think it's too sacky. Our opponent special summons another Cybers monster, but of course it is just not enough and they lose. So that's what games look like when we're allowed to do whatever we want. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen every game. Our second match is up against Old Swarm, a deck that's not particularly threatening, but of course they have opened a hand trap, and we have kind of bricked. Double copy of Shadow Mist in our opener is not particularly good when we're not playing any ways to special summon it from hand outside of Skull Deet. So it's going to be interesting to see how we build a mediocre board through hate. We're going to start by activating this Allure of Darkness. We're going to draw two cards, one of which is a Hero Live, so we'll get at least one Shadow Mist, using its effect to get Mass Change, and oh, here comes the Ghost Ogre. That is a sweet card to Ghost Ogre, but we do have our normal, so we'll normal summon Vion, send Malicious, use Malicious to get Malicious, go into Wonder Diviner, use Malicious one more time in a special to that Link Zone, set one card, and pass it back. In their draw step, we'll flip up this Mass Change, thank God Malicious is Dark, to get Dark Law, then Wonder Diviner is going to immediately get the change back. So our opponent's going to go into Mandragora, Pot of Desires, and who we get the caster, but, uh, um, well, he has reinforcement of the army. Anyway, he'll go into Ophion, attack, and oh, thank God we have this Honesty Neos in our hand. We'll go ahead and pump this guy up, do 2350, and he will pass it back. We should have enough to beat him here, especially with a set copy of Change. We'll go ahead and Pot of Desires into basically nothing. Attack for 19, 24, and 1,000, and with that, the mass change should be lethal. Very interesting game too. One of the things that made Heroes so powerful previously was its ability to consistently make 8,000 life point plus boards by repeatedly going into the rank 4 suite. It's nice to know the deck can still OTK without access to Xyz. We've opened very well against our third opponent, who is on Paleo Frogs. Finally, meta. We have a copy of A Hero Lives and Grinder Golem, partners in crime, as always. We'll start by firing off that A Hero Lives to get ourselves a copy of Shadow Mist, and of course, afterwards, we'll get a copy of Mass Change to our hand. After that's done, we're going to get off to the races with these Grinder Golem tokens, making a Link Karibo and a Link Spider into an Akashic Magician, returning the Golem for more shenanigans. We'll get two more tokens, which are going to become a Security Dragon, returning that Golem one more time. Then we'll Special Summon it. One of these tokens will become a Link Karibo from Grave, and the other will become material for Skull Death. Just incredible card that's so critical to so many of our plays. We'll fire off an Allure, banishing a copy of Grinder Golem, and because we have two copies of Mass Chains set, I'm going to leave this Vion on my side of the field with a Malicious in Grave, so we have access to two Dark Laws. In standby, we're going to make a Dark Law and get ourselves an Honesty Neos to our hand. Now, because our opponent's on Paleo, they're kind of uh, up the creek without a paddle, and we do have the Honesty Neos to protect from this impending Golem attack, so they'll just have to set five and pass. Unfortunately, Duke Frog lines up very poorly against Dark Law. We're going to get Anti-Spell Fragrance flipped on us, which turns off this Mass Change in our hand, but otherwise isn't particularly frightening. They'll go ahead and Opabinia our copy of Mass Change, but that just triggers us to fire it off, and we'll go ahead and attack over the Duke Frog and attack for game. So we're back with the deck. Now there's a lot to talk about here, the first of which is Grinder Golem. The entire playability of this strategy relies on Grinder Golem's continued legality in the TCG, which is something I don't know how much we can count on. Already it makes Bora load, which is semi-frightening, but because Skull Death circumvents the only downside to Golem, the summoning restriction, I'm super concerned that the two might not ever be legal together. Now discounting that, I think Hero puts up a good argument for being one of the few decks capable of making the most out of this synergy. Now there's a lot of incidental upside. The special summon off of Skull Death, triggering Shadow Miss effect, a hero lives playing well with Golem, Allure of Darkness. I mean, this may be the shell that I've enjoyed Golem in the most yet. More importantly, the Link Monster facilitates a halfway decent backup plan, which is something the deck was sorely missing. Instead of draw a Link Enabler or lose, the deck has sort of become draw a Link Enabler or make a Driver and a Dark Law, which is probably fine about 65% of the time. So in conclusion, I am optimistic about the future of this deck, but only in a world where it gets to play with all of its pieces. So that's that. You know, I like to pretend that I hate it, but honestly, every time a new hero monster is released, I salivate like the dog Konami thinks I am. If you want to see me play the decks I make on this show on stream, I'm on Twitch.tv every Tuesday and Thursday from 10 to midnight Eastern Standard Time, links in the description. And if you have an idea for a certain deck or archetype you want to see on a future episode of this show, let me know in the comments section and I'll do my best to get to you. Otherwise, I'll see you Monday.